Given a P form in an n dimensional space, we call the form omega, this is a P form, I want to define the so called Hodge dual. And this is denoted with this star before the letter omega, which denotes the form. So star omega is the Hodge dual. And it is defined like this. First, let me write it and then let me comment on it. So we have 1 divided by p factorial. Then I also have n minus p factorial, like this. Then I have the square root of uh, mode determinant of the metric tensor. So this is the square root of the absolute value of the determinant of g mu nu, the metric tensor. So we might consider a non-Euclidean uh, space where we have uh, this metric tensor. Then we have the Levi-Civita symbol epsilon i1 dot 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 i n. So this is an n-dimensional Levi-Civita symbol. Then we have omega with the following superscript i1 dot 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 i p. And then we have the differential um, forms. Uh, so we have the differentials dx i p plus one wedge dot 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 wedge differential of x n. So this might be a little bit uh, confusing, so let me explain it um, a little bit, and then in the next lecture we will also apply this formula. In the case of the electromagnetic field, we will calculate the Hodge dual of uh, the form F, the two form associated to the electromagnetic field, but we will do this uh, in the next video. In here I want to describe it in words. So let's start from observing this. So at first observe that we started from a P form. The P form was omega. And what we obtain here is an N minus P form. Why is that? Well, you can see that from the number of differentials that appear here. So we have N minus P differentials. These are N minus P. And this tells us that this is an N minus P form. So we are in, in an n-dimensional space, we have a p-form, and the odd dual simply gives us an n minus p-form. And this p-factorial is just a constant in the denominator, it is not so important, that uh, tells us the number of permutations that we have uh, for these indices. You can see that we have p-indices for the form omega, so in particular this is a tensor omega i1 ip, associated to the form omega and the number of permutations is uh, kept track of here in the denominator. So we have p factorial which accounts for those possibilities. And then we also have n minus p factorial that takes into account the number of permutations of uh, these indices which are n minus p. So it's quite easy. Then let me also tell you that we have omega with uh, superscripts and you can obtain omega with superscripts from omega with uh, subscripts i1 dot 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 ip and then you simply use the metric tensor g mu nu or whatever you want to label these indices to erase these indices. Now let me also tell you, I want to observe another thing. I want to observe, I want to show you that this, that I am highlighting, that I am circling now, is a tensor. And how can I show you that? Well, I can show you that starting from this. We know that the square root of uh, the absolute value of the determinant of the metric tensor, so the square root of mod g times the uh, absolute value of dx1 wedge dot 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 wedge dxn, so this is the mode of um, this wedge product of differentials, this is equal to the square root of mod g tilde, and then we have mod dy1 wedge dot 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 wedge dyn. Now we can also rewrite this equality in the following manner. In particular, this means that the square root of uh, mod g times epsilon i1 dot 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 i n divided by n factorial times dx i1 wedge dot 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 
where dx i n is equal to the square root of mod g tilde and then we have epsilon let's put a tilde here j1 dot 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 jn divided by n factorial dy j1 wedge dot 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 and then we have wedge dy jn now let me remind you that we derived the is uh, equality here in previous lectures and if you want we can also remove this mode provided that the determinant of um, the transformation so the Jacobian in going from this coordinates to this coordinates is positive so if the Jacobian is positive we can avoid considering uh, the magnitude here or uh, the absolute value if you want it's easy to see this from uh, the lecture in which we derived this equality and let, just let me remind you what we derived in particular we found that dx1 wedge dot 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 wedge dxn was equal to j the jacobian dy1 wedge dot 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 wedge dyn and we also found that g tilde is equal to g times j squared so the jacobian squared G tilde is uh, the um, determinant of the metric tensor G tilde, which we define with respect to the y variables. So when you take the square root here, you have mod G tilde square root equal to square root of mod G. And then in principle here you have the mod of J when you take the square root. But if, if uh, the determinant is positive, then here you can simply replace the mod with j itself and now that you have found this well you see that if you put this together with this you get exactly this right and from this you can derive this by remembering that in general this expression here the xi1 wedge dot dot, dot wedge dxin is equal to epsilon i1 dot 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 i n dx1 wedge dot 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 wedge dx n and uh, similarly here so here i'm putting a tilde above epsilon just to remind us that we are in the y domain and when you sum over i1 i2 dot 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 i n this multiplied with this will give you n factorial which will cancel this n factorial in the denominator so it's quite easy to realize that indeed these two are the same finally let me do one more step from here well we can rewrite that as the square root of mod g epsilon i1 dot dot, dot i n then we have derivative of x i1 with respect to y j1 dot dot, dot dx i n derivative with respect to y j n then we have dy j1 wedge dot 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 wedge dy j n and this is equal to so i have gotten rid of uh, these n factorials in the denominator they are not important they appear on both sides so i can get rid of them and on the right i have the square root of mod g tilde epsilon tilde j1 dot 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 jn and then i have dy j1 wedge dot 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 wedge dy jn now if you compare the right side with the, the left side you can see that this quantity must be equal to this one and this is how you see that this quantity behaves like a tensor because the transformation of this quantity is like that of a tensor because you can see that these derivatives appear and this is just the transformation of a tensor but you have to remember that this is indeed a tensor if the Jacobian is greater than zero otherwise this is not really a tensor it's also known as a pseudo tensor 
This implies that uh, this Hodge dual, this so-called Hodge dual, behaves like a tensor, provided that uh, the sign of the Jacobian is the right one. If we can find covariant objects using this formula, then this might be an interesting thing to try, and we will do that in the next video for the electromagnetic field. We will see what the Hodge dual will be and what it will lead us to. In particular, it will lead us to the remaining Maxwell's equations.